Yo guys, what are you think? Hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to the video channel, and it is a nice, brisk little Saturday, so we're rocking our little pink hoodie. Shout out to Yes Theory. This is like my second favorite um, sweatshirt ever. It's a YouTube channel called Yes Theory. Huge shout out to them. Just look it up. They post some really, really cool content. It's not poker related, but um, I really like their message, their vibe, their channel, everything, and uh, I drink their Kool-Aid. Anyways, we're gonna make a quick stop to UPS right now, dropping off um, a package for my boy Todd, shout out to you if you're watching this. Um, thanks for buying the blue little poker chip. I have a few left, so uh, I'll be sending, I'll be dropping this off, shipping it out to you. And uh, we're gonna get going on to another little session at Encore. Uh, recently, I haven't really been posting too much high quality or high production videos, just kind of pumping out hands and pumping out content. And uh, today's gonna be a little different. I want to add a more like little, I guess, artistic flavor into the mix and make it just a little more high effort. So, on to some more high effort stuff, starting now. All right, guys, we're here sitting down on the waiting list and we're waiting to hop into a game here. There's a few 1-3s going on right now, so hopefully we can get into a good one, run it up, and report back to you as to what happens. But uh, right now, sitting by our lonely self, talking to the vlog, at least I have you guys to talk to. And um, yeah, let's see. It's a Saturday, the night is young. It's actually 2 p.m., so not even nighttime, but I think uh, we've got some potential today. We've got a couple of good tables that I would like to join, and hopefully we can get involved into the app. It's session update time. It has been uh, four hours since I sat down at that table, and a lot has happened. We're on a really good table, but a whole lot has happened and we're gonna fill you in on what's going on. So, we're on a really good table, played for four hours. Let's go over some of the hands and uh, I'll give you guys a little update as to how this whole session's going so far. So, very quickly, first hand we have Pocket Kings in early position with $300 starting stack. I open it up to $16 and we get two callers from middle position and small blind. I size up the 16 because I knew that, you know, it's a good table. This can be some action people are very call happy anyways flop comes seven jack for two spades and a club out there and um, I am going to bet $30 when it checks to me and lovely we get action both players make the call trying to fade some spades and just get a clean run out here the turn is the ace of clubs so not really the most ideal card in the world but it does Second bring in the back door Draw. It's over, but we're not exactly entirely super worried about that ace. So when it checks to me again, I'm going to go for slim value with our pocket kings. I think we beat a lot of jack X's and flush draws, so I decide to go for a small value bet of $45, and only the small blind makes the call, so we're going to go heads up to a river, probably going to shut down on all rivers, and just get the showdown here. River is the five of clubs. The backdoor flush does get there. He checks to me. I very happily check it back, and he shows pocket nines. So we take it down, um, and we get that value back through. Next hand after that, we have red pocket kings. So pocket kings are quite a theme in this video. And in middle position, and there's a limper to me. Once again, I'm gonna size up. Raised to seventeen dollars, and we get three bet from the hijack. Hijack throws in the three bet to fifty dollars, and it pulls all the way back to me. I look at his stack size, he only has about 165 behind, so 
Given that, pretty standard floor bet. We're just gonna rip it in, hope that he is at the top of his range. Be call. Two, five, no I jam, he calls, and we go to a run out of eight, six, four, three, eight. He shows pocket, queens, and we take it down, so. I'm um, sorry to stack you, boo, but uh, shout out to you. Nice playing with you, and we got more hands to come along with you. Hand after that, there's an unley on straddle, and we look down at king queen offsuit in the hijack. The middle position player opens it up to $16, and it's such a really small bet, especially with the straddle. So, um, in position of this player, I'm gonna go put in the three bet, put in some pressure to $50. It folds all the way back to him, and he makes the call. We go to a flop that's king high, pretty favorable. It's king 10, nine, shout out to Andrew Dini, by the way. Um, king 10, nine, two hearts up there. And he instant jams. Insta jams, $264, and we are just left really thinking as to what the hell are we gonna do in this spot. Um, it was the probably one of the more ideal flops we could ask for, but with only one 10 in the middle and he jams, I have to be right so often, and I just don't think, he, I mean, obviously he's not bluffing here, but like what kind of combo draws would he really want to jam with? I'm trying to find a hand I beat, I guess ace jack, uh, suited. I mean, I do have the Queen of Hearts, which is really tough. It's a terrible card to have because it just blocks a ton of the combo draw bluffs that he could be throwing out there. So, um, at the end of the day, like, I guess, like, realistically, I guess I'm calling for a chop and maybe I beat King Jack. I don't think he does that with King Jack. So, at the end of the day, I decided to just lay it down. It's a pretty standard fold, but, like, it's such a gross spot. Like, tried to find a value hand and I really couldn't find much that I beat, like, just combo draws. And that's kind of it in King Jack. So, Besides that, we lay it down. He later said that he had a king with a good kicker, so probably king-queen, probably we're chopping that, but it just really wasn't worth putting a 260 in there when I'm probably behind a lot. Following him, we have pocket jacks in the small blind, and there's an on the gun player who limps. On the gun plus one, pretty confident player, raises it up to $15, and action ensues when there are four callers to me. Out of the small blind, out of position, I think about squeezing this a lot, but just with the, given the action, I would have had this three bet really big, and Jax isn't really one of those spots I want to just go and ship it with. So, for all those reasons, I just flat and the only player called as well. So we're going seven ways. Seven freaking ways to a flop of queen high. It's queen eight five, all hearts. We do have the jack of hearts and middle pair here. It's not the worst board in the world, but definitely not ideal for sure. So when I check to a middle position player, um, everyone checked to this guy. He bets $45, pulls to me, and for that price, with the jack of hearts, gonna go for it. I think the jack of hearts could one, be good three. here sometimes, but um, one, three, realistically, no, I'm 50-50. I'm either good with my pair of jacks, or I'm good with the jack of hearts one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three. there. So um, we call, the on the gun player also calls, and the on the gun plus one, the free flop raiser, check raises now to 225. Alex, have 225. Two, two, Huge Alex bet. Um, luckily, we don't have much of a decision to make because the middle position player actually ends up throwing it all in there. He jammed throughout 250 total, 260, whatever it was. Easy fold for me. Boo, the, uh, who was the, on the under the gun player, he uh, shows me his hands and folds. He had queen eight, so flop top two and, and folds there. Pretty good fold by him because ended up the only one player obviously calls the all in. He had ace queen and the middle position player shows 10 six of hearts for the flush. 10 six holds and he takes it down with his flush on the run out of, you know, just a bunch of diamonds and uh, yeah. I guess 10-6 wins it somehow. Next hand, Pocket Kings in the big blind. Once again, Pocket Kings, and there's five limps to me in the big blind. We're gonna go raise the left three here to $28. $28 I thought would be big enough to kind of ISO and maybe get one caller in there. Nope, we get three callers. So yeah, we're going three ways, or four ways to a flop of Jack-9 Deuce, two hearts out there. Really great flop for us, obviously, and out of position, I'm gonna lead out and bet $70, charging the max for flush draws and trying to get a jack to call as well. It falls through the button who ends up uh, not thinking too long before ripping it all in. $350 total. We have him covered and on such a drive flop, like we're just gonna go with this all the time. I don't really feel amazing about this jam, like he could be jamming with a set here a lot, but this is the player who plays a lot of his hands, so obviously we're just gonna go for it. And we toss in the call, the run out, turn is an eight, the river is a jack, 
we feel so bad about this. And luckily he shows Queen 8 of Hearts for a missed flush draw, turn pair, and we take it down with their Kings, so we'll take that. The money comes our way, and I don't know. We faded a bunch of stuff, and somehow that, even with that run out, one pair was good there. So we're running things up, we're running hot, and now this next hand we have Ace King offsuit in the small blind. We're playing so many hands out of the blind, it's crazy. The middle position player opens it up to $12. We get a button who flats, and obviously easy easy squeeze spot to $55. The middle position player folds, and the button ends up jamming for 177 total. I don't know what this call jam hand range is like, but Ace King is obviously way too strong to fold to this, so I snap call, and uh, let's go to the board. The round is Queen Jack 4, Ace 5 Deuce. Opus. Not to the board that we want. I tell the jammer that he's good, because I don't think Ace King High is ever as good here. And uh, he goes and mucks it. He tries to muck it, at least. I tell him that he wins, and then he mucks. The, the cards don't actually reach the muck pile though, unfortunately, in the middle of the table, and he actually ends up realizing, oh wait, he said I win. So he goes and shows 18. What's happening? What, how do you think that you weren't good? I don't know why you mucked Ace Queen. It wasn't even like an unintentional muck because he mucked it, threw it in the middle of the table, and then like took a step or two off, and then was like, oh wait, let me show. Whatever. Um, that was really annoying. <laughs> uh, Ace Queen just call jammed. Call four bet jammed. I don't really know that line at all. And gets there with the three outer, so. Uh, we lose that pod, unfortunately, and uh, we are moving on. After the ace king hand, we pick up pocket queens and under the gun, obviously out of position again. So under the gun here, not a play that I recommend to anyone, but on such an active table, I decide to go for it. I open limp. Open limp to $3, and action goes to the cutoff, who thankfully bails me out and raises it up to $15. Thank God, I didn't want to go play a limp pot with queens, obviously. Folds to me, gonna put in the plan to 3-bet here. I 3-bet on the bigger side to $55. The cutoff doesn't think too long before ripping it all in. $305 total, and I snap call this. Um, in hindsight, I, mean, I probably could have given it a few seconds to think about the situation, but pocket queens, 100 big blinds, we're gonna get it in. So he shows pocket kings, unfortunately, and the board is pretty clean for him. He takes that one down, so um, in hindsight, like I guess it's really easy to see things after the fact, but when someone puts in $300 pre-flop, especially in a four bet pot, most 1-3 players don't do that without aces or kings. I was at the top of my range with queens and it's a really nitty fold, but I don't really love the snap call, probably would have liked to think about and assess the situation a little bit more, but um, that 6x raise got him and he doubles up there. Things are not going great for us, so now we pick up ace-king and yep, we're out of position here in the small blind again, it's freaking stupid. And we get three limps to me. I don't even want to play this hand, but I just have to. I just had to three bet to, not three bet, I raised to $23. And the only gun player is the only caller, Boo. Once again, Boo, you are back in this video. So, we're gonna go to a flop of King 10 Deuce Rainbow. It's a relatively dry-ish board, and I have top top here. Um, I decided to check out of position here. Um, I think with top top I'm really nutted and I don't think I can get three streets of value on this connected, on this like very unconnected-ish board anyways, especially Rainbow. So plan to check for deception. He checks it back unfortunately. We go to a turn which is the jack of hearts, brings in a back door flush draw, board a little more connected now so obviously got a bet here. I bet $30. He decides to raise now to $80 total and I'm hating the spot. Um, I let that jack get there and I'm hating, hating, hating the spot. I t tank for, I don't know, probably like 60 seconds or a minute and so I just lay it down. I hold his face up. Just wanted to show. He's subscribed to the channel. He's going to see this anyways. So I pull his king face up and uh, he said he was ahead. He said he had the king. Probably king 10, king jack, uh, probably just king jack or something like that. So he takes it down. Nice hand boo, but I am running bad. The last hand of this four hour mid session that we have so far, we have Ace Jack Offsuit in Under the Gun. 
I opened it up to $15. We're not gonna slow play this shit anymore. And we get two callers to play in middle position and the big line. So we're in middle position here to a flop of ace, ace, five. Awesome, flop trips. That's great. And when the big line checks to me, I'm gonna check for deception, hoping someone's gonna take a stab at it on later streets. Don't think I can get immediate value right now. The middle position player ends up betting $15 and the big line calls. Action's on to me. I decide and think about raising here, but realistically, my jack kicker is pretty decent, I'd say. And just trying to get more money in there on later streets and then probably put in the check raise or something like that on the turn. So we just call the $15 and we're still three ways to a turn, which is the queen of clubs. Realistically, really, really good card for us. It actually removes the, the possibilities and different combos of ace-queen. So we really like this card a ton. And when the big line checks to me, I'm actually gonna go and lead up here, trying to get value. I lead for $40, and the middle position player calls the 40. Action is the big line, who jams now. He jams a total of 135, and I'm sitting in this spot with Given my stack size and how much is left, like I'm trying to get value. Like I think I'm good here a lot. Um, I didn't really think about this too much. Um, like it's weird where the middle position player calls the $40 bet and a big line jams, and it's obviously for value. Um, I'm trying to think of hands that I lose to, and it's really just pocket fives. Um, Ace King obviously does not really play here because I think someone with three bet Ace King, Ace Queen, less combination than that. So obviously I'm not really too worried. Um, I just have to just go for it. I rip it in, and two like probably a millisecond later after I say all in, we get an immediate snap call from the middle position player. So we're kind of dead. We're kind of dead with our Ace Jack. Um, he shows middle position player shows Ace Queen. The big line shows pocket fives. The river was whatever, I don't remember. It doesn't matter because Ace Queen scoops it. So nice hand to you. And he takes it down. He ran really, really well. And we did not run well at all. So we were running a little hot there, but obviously just ran into cooler after cooler after cooler. So um, we're in the game for 750 right now. We're playing for four hours, like I said. I think I have about close to 400 in front. We chipped up a little bit, but um, down a bunch. I was up, originally I had a 1, 1K stack, so I was up like 600 in the session, and things changed so freaking fast. It's crazy. So. I'm contemplating on if I want to play more. The game is really good, and I've been talking to you guys for like 15 minutes, so I'm probably gonna hop back in the game, try to get something, try to run it up somehow, get some run good going, chip back up, and hopefully leave if not broke. So, anyways, let's get into it and see what unfolds. I just ended my session, and I'm in the car, just a little annoyed at myself, so. I uh, ended up playing for a little bit longer than I should have, for sure. It, I ended up playing for seven hours, and we're gonna go over the last hand of the session. Clearly, it didn't go well, given my mood, and I didn't really cash out because I busted and got stacked by a good guy, but I got stacked because I didn't necessarily play this one well. I didn't really, I just kinda lost my mind, and it's just one of those stupid degen moments that I just had to go with it, so. Let's go over the hand. I'm in the small blind. Loady doody do. We're just playing out of position every time. Every time we get hands, it's out of position. It's freaking crazy. Pocket jacks. I think I have a pocket jacks with a club and a heart out there. And an early position player, solid player, raises it up to $15. The player to his left calls and folds all the way back to me. I decide to go ahead and three bet this, thinking I am probably ahead and out of position. Um, gonna at least narrow the ranges um, here. So I put in the three bet to $55 and only the original Razor calls. Um, realizing that he is going to be pretty narrow because um, it's just, just, it's just gonna be pretty narrow. So we're gonna go to a flop out of position here heads up to a flop of king eight five something like that all clubs and we have the jack of clubs out there and we decide to go ahead and lead out 75 dollars why did i do this there was no particular reason why 
Not really sure. I think I check this back all the time, but I really wanted to win it. Um, and he just has so many king X's in his range, even as weak as king queen, but I don't even think he can fold that. But um, I bet 75 and he calls. The turn is a 10 of diamonds, doesn't give us any help. We decide to go ahead and bet 160 again, and as I threw out this bet, I was hoping that he would fold ace-king somehow. I'm not really sure how I can ever expect or hope someone to fold ace-king on a board like this, but that was my goal and hope. So as played, I bet the 160. He basically rips it all in, leaving, um, and he covers me. Um, I had about like 230, 50 more, and I am um, already committed myself, unfortunately, to this pot. So I make the call hoping to bank a club somehow. They do not come through, and we uh, we lose to ace queen, ace king of spades. So not really sure. There's not a whole lot of analysis. I played for seven hours, and I think I just played one hour too many. The last hour I played really, really shitty. Like I wouldn't, I don't even want to go over the, all the other hands. Like even th that I even played well. Like you saw me. I went over the hands from hours one to four, and from hours five to seven were a little sus. Hours five and six were fine, but hour number seven was really, really bad. So. That is unfortunate. I was in the game for 750, out of the game for zero. So uh, that was a really big pot. That was really dumb. I just kind of punted off 450, I think. No, I punted off more than that. I had like 500 or something in front and, or not 500, whatever it was, it was enough to hurt. So not a great feeling. I wish I could say like, woohoo, I'm fine, but nope, because it's not even that the cards fucked me, it was just my stupid self gambling here. So played for a little bit longer than I should have, that is the main takeaway. Secondly, bad news, I won't be able to record in Encore anymore, or at least do those mid-session updates and hand analysis and hand reviews and stuff. Um, got a second warning, <laughs> it's because, uh, <coughs> got my second warning from, um, recording so I'm probably not gonna risk getting a final warning because that's not great so unfortunately the just it's really annoying as well I just really want to up the I really want to up the video quality and production value of these vlogs and videos but I am really handcuffed here by not being able to record at the tables or even do anything at, inside the casino so um, not my rules the casino's rules and that is a bummer but maybe things will change but right now not a good day but we can bounce back next time just needed a big loss like this to just kick myself in the ass and just figure it out so hopefully that's what i'm gonna do next session and not be a dj because i played really i think i played really well the whole time just ran into coolers and also just lost my mind that last hand so that's it that's the video hopefully you enjoyed i'll see you guys in the next one peace